In this presentation, we will generate, analyze, print, and export to Excel a accounts receivable aging report. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. We are in our test file, Greg's Design and Landscaping. We're going to go to the reports on the left side, reports on the left side. In our favorite reports, we probably have the financial statements, the balance sheet and the income statement or profit and loss. We're going to go down and look for the report we're searching for now, an AR or Accounts Receivable Aging Summary Report. Then we'll go back up and see how it ties into the major reports, the financial statement reports, the balance sheet and income statement. Note that as you scroll down looking for reports, you have this item to expand or detract. We're not looking in the just business overview reports. We're looking in the who owes you money reports. That's what accounts receivable is. So when we think about accounts receivable, we're thinking about who owes us money. And we're going to go down to the accounts receivable aging summary. We could also locate that by searching for the accounts receivable or AR summary report. Before we go in there, however, let's first consider how it relates to the major financial statements as all other reports basically do. All other reports for the most part will be drawn back to be part of expand on the detail in the financial statement reports, balance sheet, profit and loss or income statement. This one having to do with the balance sheet account, having to do with accounts, with accounts receivable, an asset. So let's first take a look at the balance sheet then. We're gonna to go to the balance sheet and see which we're, reports we're considering. So we will then go to the date range. We're going to say the year of 2018 or 01, 01, to 12, That's January 1st, 2018 to December 31st, 2018. Run that report. Here is our balance sheet. Now this is as of a point in time. Notice the type of report we're talking about. This is where it is as of a point in time. Can't change. It is what it is. We're going to go down. It can change over time, remember, but not as of now. It, what, it, what is now is now. That's what it is. So we're going to be here. Here's the accounts receivable. The amount is 5,281. So we want to see some variance on this report. Now, what are some variants on this report? Well, we can say who owes us that money. This represents people owing us money. Two things we want to know about that. Who owes us the money? Because we're going to try to collect on it. And two, how old is it? Because if it's past a certain date of due, is it past due? Is it more than past due? Then we have to decide, do we want to take collection action on it and that type of thing? So the accounts receivable then broken out by who owes us the money and how old it is, very common report, something that uh, many people specialize in actually just working with, in essence, that report for the most part and trying to see uh, if, they can, if they can organize and collect on the accounts receivable. So that's what we will take a look at now. We're going to go and break that information out by the AR agent report. Back to the reports on the left side then. So we'll go back into our reports on the left side. We're going to scroll back down to who owes you, who owes you, like us, like the company. And we're going to go into the accounts receivable aging summary. Not the detail this time, but the summary report. A very common report to look at. We're going to change the date range to the year ended. Uh, December 31st, 2018. Note, there's only one date range here. There's no, there's no range. There's one date. And that's because it is a balance sheet type of, court, of report. Unlike the balance sheet we looked at, where it has different type of variants that make it easier to have two date ranges. This one's basically specifically saying, hey, what do you want? Do you want the accounts receivable as of a point in time? That's what it means, as of a point. There is no date range. There is no time involved here. It's as of one point in time. So we're going to say, all right, it's 12-31-18, December 31st, 2018. Then we will run that report. Here we have our information. The customers are going to be on the left-hand side. Remember, customers are related to accounts receivable. So anytime we think of accounts receivable, who owes us money, we're talking customers. The customers are on the left side. It's going to be sorted by customer in alphabetical order as the default. The important section then will going to be this is the amount that is current. This is the amount between 30, uh, 1 and 30 days past current, 30 and 60 days, 61 and 90. Once again, these are the periods, meaning this is what, what is still collectible and not past due. So these people are okay. This, this item here, they're good. They haven't gone past the due date. They're good. This item here is 1 to 30 days past due. That's not good. We should, we should check into that and collect on it, but not too bad. We're not too worried about them yet. This one over here is uh, 31 to 60 days past due, a little bit more troublesome. 
we probably want to call these people and see what is going on. This particular one, 61 to 90 days past due, we're probably getting to the point where we're going to give up on that and or pass it to collections because we're not we're not able to collect on that one. Nothing is over 91 days past due. That's great. And if there were, we'd probably have to think about just either writing it off, saying, hey, we, we did work there and we're not going to get paid. We're not going to deal with that customer again. And that's part of the, uh, this port's reports purpose we can then say hey it's this per this reports person's not worth dealing with because they don't pay us <laughs> so we're going to we're going to remove them at this point in time or go and take collection actions and see if we can get part of our money back by hiring uh collection actions in order to uh, see if we can get payment on this we have some other features up top we might want to see this as uh, not in order by customer but in order by who owes us money in other words if we check the total ascending order we want to have the total column it's in ascending order meaning we've got the lowest to the highest lowest to the highest and we're looking at the totals here the lowest to the highest in the totals or we might want to go the other way which is probably more useful typically total in descending order so now we're looking at the total column and we're in descending order so that means the ones that have the, the biggest amount the ones we're most worried about are at the top in this case so here we have that other options we have we could say the typical default they're giving us here is days per aging report 30 days that's typical we have current within 30 days and it's one to 30 days past due that's going to be a typical type of of period so we're probably going to keep that as the default we might want to show more than four or less than four periods. We might want to show six periods outstanding and run that report. And then if we had a lot of people that were, were in this area, we can get more detail that way. We can say these, these are really past due. We need to, if they're you know, up, up in this area, we might have different actions than this area. So four is just going to be a standard. So it's just counting up 30 days each time past due. And so we'll go back to four and run that report. We can also collapse uh, some of the items in the reports and that's going to collapse some of the customer details in this case with jobs so we have jobs within the customers we then collapse the report then we're going to remove the jobs and we just get a straight nice look to the report uh, and the jobs will be then included there we do also have the quick zoom feature which is kind of like the auditing feature for us to go back to the data entry point as we've seen in other areas so for example in the 61 to 90 if we're trying to say hmm uh, Red Rock Dinner, when, you know, what was that from? What's the invoice related to it? If we want more detail, if we want to go back to the source document, we could use the quick zoom 161 or 16056, go into it. Here is the invoice. So here's the invoice. If we wanted to go back, we can go back. If we want to go deeper and say, let me take a look at that invoice. We're going to go into the, any, any area here. It's going to give us that highlight. Let's take a look at that invoice. We go into the invoice by selecting it. It'll then generate the invoice for us. So here's the invoice that creates that past due amount. If we need then to reprint it, give it to them again, uh, we could send it once again. So we'll close this out. I'm going to scroll back up and I'm going to use this item to go back to report summary, back to report summary, and then there is our report. We'll do some standard customization. We're going to go down to the bottom here. We're going to remove the date time prepared stamp and so on and so forth. Going up top to the customization field. And we're going to go down to the header and footer tab. We're going to remove the date prepared and the time prepared. We have no report basis. Why? Why don't, why don't we have a report basis? We've had one in every other report. And the reason is because this is accounts receivable, which is an accrual account. So if there was no, it has to be accrual. It, there is no cash basis if you're using accounts receivable because uh, on a cash basis, we don't have accounts receivable. We wouldn't record any transaction if cash wasn't... Um, received and therefore we would never record a transaction for a sale of people owing us money and that's one of the reasons that we kind of have to use accounts receivable or an accrual method in some cases if we do work before we get paid those types of industries so we're going to go ahead and run that report we've removed the date and time stamp down below and next thing we're going to do is customize reports up top once again and go through our standards which is to remove the pennies we're going to remove the cents we're going to remove the or make bracketed negative numbers and show them as red. 
So that's what we've been doing so far. We'll keep with that standardization. There we have it. Looks a little cleaner, a little easier to see, possibly nicer for others to view. Now we're going to go ahead and save this report, memorize it, then we're going to print it, and then we'll export it to Excel and organize it. We'll customize this report up top by save and customize. We're going to save it into our group, which I put in my reports. These are my reports, and we're going to say save that. And then we have custom reports. So now it should save the formatting, removing the pennies and having the sorting that we have here and all and removing the date and time and all that good stuff. We can check that by going to the reports on the left side and then going into the custom reports areas. And now we're in my reports here, only showing the reports in this session that we have been working on. We see here the AR or accounts receivable aging summary report, selecting that. We see a familiar report that we just had open. That's the one we want. We're going to go ahead and then print this as a PDF file, selecting the print up top. Print. And we scroll down. It looks like it fits on one page. That looks good. So we will print. Once again, the preview looks good and we will print. Here we are. I'm going to select this drop down, go to the desktop view. We want to go to the get great guitars because that's going to be our future folder, but this is our work folder. We're in section four. That's the one we want. And we want the AR aging report. So I'm going to make it AR. Now you can't put a slash as we've seen in the prior presentation. Uh, we have to, so you just have to put a summary. You could put a period if you so choose, if that would be helpful. As of 12.31.18, I'm going to go ahead and save this report because we're going to need it once again when we export to Excel. There we have that. It's going to print it as a PDF. We'll X out of this, closing it up. And then we'll export to Excel by selecting the export area. Export to Excel. It's going to open up down here if you're using Google Chrome as am I as I am. Here we have it. I typically go down here into the page layout, check and see if it fits on a page. It sure does. That looks good. Looks great. We're going to go back to the normal view then. And let's go ahead and save this report. So we'll go to files up top, practice saving, practice organizing, practicing putting this in a format that we can then provide to others as well as find ourselves tomorrow or even later, which can be difficult if not done well. So we'll go to this section four. And then we're going to call this uh, the AR aging again. So I just paste that information there and save this report. Next thing we want to do is just, I'm going to put this report, everything we have in section four into one field and just practice organizing this as we've been doing, as we go through this problem. Here we are in our folder. If we open up our folder, we're going to go into section four. And notice we have all this information. We could, we could attach this if we had to give it to someone, if we had to turn it in and as, as a student, or if we had to give it to someone, a supervisor or ourselves, we could attach it separately. We could zip the file, or we could try to put it all on one document, which we're gonna put on this section four. So I'm gonna open up section four here, and we're gonna have all the data we've got so far and try to see if we can put this in one format to display it to people to make it look somewhat impressive even though they may not even open it. And we're gonna open up this file, have a new sheet. Here is the sheet that we just exported. So we wanna take that information, gonna select the triangle up top, selecting the entire sheet, right click on it and copy it. And then we'll minimize this. We'll go up to A1 and paste, right click and paste. So there we have that. And then we're just gonna change the sheet name the sheet name. So we'll go up top. I'm going to double click on this sheet. So I'm going to double click on it, right click and copy. And then we'll go back over and I'm just going to double click here, right click and paste, or I, I used the keyboard, you can control uh, V. So there we have that. So now we have everything we've got so far on, on in section four here, we can go ahead and get ready to turn that in make it look really nice, really impressive so that, um, you know, it looks good. So we're going to go ahead. We could also save it as a PDF by going up top file tab. And we could say that we want to print it. I'm going to print it to the PDF. I think this oftentimes is easier to do to practice doing. And we want to print it the entire workbook, not just the one worksheet. And that'll print all of our reports so far in section four on one worksheet, which we can then attach easily make it look easy for someone else to, to, to take a look at. And uh, again, presentation is gonna be 
a lot of, of bookkeeping, whether it be student presentation, whether it be client presentation, whether it be presented to a supervisor, whether it be something that you've got to go back into or we have to go back into and look up a year later possibly and figure out uh, what we did, why we did it, and how it's formatted. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.